Let's take a short break now that we've ended the first half. So again, lipases in the stomach will break down short and medium main fatty acids. In the intestine, bile emulsifies the lipids. The pancreatic enzymes degrade it until finally we have Two mono acylglycerol, cholesterol, and free fatty acids. That food you ate before is transported. These three will bind with bile salts to become mixed salts. To be absorbed in the brush border of the intestinal mucosa. This guy ate some time ago. The three digestive products, namely two mono acylglycerol, cholesterol, and the free fatty acids, together with bile salts, form mixed mysos. Mixed mysos are disc shaped clusters of amphiphatic lipids that coalesce their hydrophobic group inside and their hydrophilic groups outside the cluster. These are solvable in the aqueous environment of the intestinal lumen. They will approach the primary site of lipid absorption, which is the brush border of the mucosal cell. They will be separated with the liquid contents in the lumen that mixes poorly in the bulk fluid. In this process, the hydrophilic surface facilitates the transport of the hydrophobic surface through water layer up to the brush border where it will be absorbed. The lipids absorbed in the enterocytes migrate to the endoplasmic reticulum where biosynthesis of complex lipids takes place. Fatty acids are then converted to their active form, the thiokinase. Using its derivatives, the two monoacylglycerols are absorbed by enterocytes and converted to triacylglycerol by the enzyme triacylglycerol synthase. This complex synthesis by the two consecutive actions of the two enzyme activities, the monoacylglycerol transferase, diacylglycerol acyl transferase. Then, the cholesterol with the acid of the enzyme acyl transferase will form cholesterol ester. The three product will enter the chylomicron and be excreted to the lymphatic system. After absorbing in the gastric mucosa, the lipids will migrate into the endoplasmic reticulum, where formation of complex lipids are done forming triacylglycerols and cholesterol esters. These products will enter the chylomicron and then excrete into the lymphatic system, where the tags will thus be broken down into its final components to be utilized in different parts of the body. This is how it happens. So now we have newly synthesized triacylglycerols and cholesterol esters. These substances form aggregates in an aqueous environment. Knowing this, these substances must be packaged to be lipid droplets surrounded by thin layers composed of phospholipids and a sterified cholesterol and a single protein molecule, apple lipoprotein B48. This apple lipoprotein B48 is similar to apple B100 in such as they originate from the same DNA as Apple B100 but only 48% of its total DNA. Now back to the thin layer of the lipid droplets. This layer increases the stability of the droplet and it also increases its solubility, thus preventing multiple particles from coalescing. These are called chylomicrons. The presence of these particles in the lymph after a lipid-rich meal gives the lymph a milky appearance. This is called chyle. The chylomicrons are released by exocytosis from the enterocytes into lacteals. Lacteals are lymphatic vessels originating in the villi of the small intestine. They follow the lymphatic system into the thoracic duct and are moved to the subglavian vein, where they enter the blood. The triacylglycerols in the chylomicrons are broken down in the capillaries of skeletal muscles and adipose tissues, but also those of the heart, lung, kidney, and liver. The triacylglycerols in chylomicrons are degraded to free fatty acids and glycerol, by the action of lipoprotein lipase, which is produced by adipocytes and muscle cells and associated with the luminal surface of peripheral tissues. Free fatty acids may directly enter the adjacent muscle cells or adipocytes and are transported in the blood associated with serum albumin until they are taken up by cells. Most cells can oxidize fatty acids to produce energy. Adipocytes can produce triacylglycerols re-esterifying free fatty acids which are then stored until needed by the body. Glycerol is used exclusively by the liver to produce glycerol-3-phosphate, 
which can enter glycolysis or gluconeogenesis by oxidation to dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Chylomicron remnants bind to receptors on liver and are endocytosed, which are then hydrolyzed to their component part cholesterol and nitrogenous bases. And that's how lipids are digested, absorbed, and stored. Wake up.